Michael and Maria recently had a baby. The girls and I have not met Michael's new baby at all. I found out that Michael and Maria had a baby. I didn't feel any type of way. Like, I was actually, like, happy for him. But I did laugh that he, that he had a girl. He's gonna always have girls until he learns how to treat women. Welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for a little cute little video. I'm taking it back, y'all. Let's go back to the originator, okay? To the OGs, okay? To the greatness of love after lockup. How y'all doing? I thought I would do this little video just to remind people how great Love After Lockup was. Okay. Since the new season of Love After Lockup will be on next Friday, the 26th of July. Okay. And what gave us the love that we had or have for Love After Lockup? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Are y'all new here? Join the family. Okay, go ahead and join the family. We don't do nothing but kick it over here. We have a good old time, okay? So, I thought to myself, how can I salute the OGs? So, I thought, you know what? We have had a whole lot of participants. But in all of the participants that we have had, Home still gets us talking. What was that one episode that had us like, Lord, have mercy. I know you lied. I know you lied. We have had many. And then I thought these couples have something in common. Toxic. And then I thought, who are the most Toxic couples of all of love after lockup history. Now, I could be here all day, all night, all week, all month. Now, there has been so many toxic um, couples throughout the years of love after lockup. I just ain't got that kind of time. But I just want to talk about the major ones. The ones that are like, oh, Lord, they had no business being together. None. None. Whatsoever. And of course, everyone's going to have their definition of what a toxic relationship is. Some of you may say, well, why didn't you add this person? This person definitely should have been on the list. Listen, okay. I'm not going to argue with the hot mess of these couples throughout these seasons, okay? So, this is just my interpretation and if you all like this video I'll put up another one with more couples until next week when the um, season starts so y'all let me know it's in y'all's control child whether y'all want me to continue on or we can stop right here let's start off with this oh god yes how can we forget Dumpster Fire Destiny? Yes, and sure. Okay, now we knew as a Love After Lockup family that De Destiny <laughs> was going to get us talking. Okay, she was a hot mess out the gate. Out the gate. Her mouth was reckless. She was reckless. We knew what she was going to do to Sean before he could even realize it. Because he was so fogged and delusional and dumbness. So Destiny gets out of prison. She done fell in love with Sean. Okay. Alright. And we knew that this isn't going to end well. Okay. Just by her manner 
charisms we knew. But then there was Sean. Here's Sean, a hard worker. Y'all remember Sean was a mechanic. He had been doing that for years. He had a stable job. Okay? He also had, what, six, seven kids. <laughs> that we later on found out that he didn't give two shits about. Okay? Alright? He wasn't paying no child support. He was not visiting his children. He was not taking their calls. The only thing that was on his mind was dumb Sapphire Destiny. How can I please her? How can I make her love me? How can I go in more debt? Okay? See, that's the main theme of love after lockup. Dead, 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 dead. Because they all do it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But see, Sean was so clouded in his love for Destiny, he didn't see that Destiny was playing him like a fiddle. Destiny had her mood swings. Destiny was buy me this, buy me that, give me that, give me this. And there was Sean doing it. And oh boy. Met up with his friends. Even his friends was like, no, 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 homie. <laughs> she ain't it. I'm going to let you know. Now, you can make your own decision. You grow them. I'm going to let you know. She ain't it. She going to have you crying in your pillow and looking at your credit score in all of 30 days. But then there's Sean. Who didn't get it? He, he didn't understand it. And then we slowly but surely See Destiny's real, real, true colors. She was so jealous of Kelly. Okay, she didn't want Sean to have anything to do with his children. With the mother of his children. She didn't want that to happen. And you know what? What's funny? She had children. You worry about his kids. Where your kids at, dumpster? She was so insufferable, Destiny was. She took no accountability for her actions. She was mean. She was nasty. She was the epitome of a mean girl. She had no regards for someone else's feelings. She was selfish, honey. But sure, he didn't see it. Okay. He begged and plead and begged and plead to have Dumpster Fire Destiny in love with him. They came to meeting up with Kelly. And they went out and they had, you know, uh, some food. And Dumpster Fire Destiny was so nasty and rude to Kelly. I mean nasty. I don't know how Kelly didn't restrain herself. Honey, it couldn't have been me. Okay? This would have went down. Okay? Destiny would have left out of there with no heart. Just snap. Just get over. Get over here. Get. I don't believe in that. And I don't believe in the B word. But she would have had her, honey, she would have had her elbows to her back on that day. And she was talking trash to Kelly. And then there's Sean co-signing it. Dumps the fire destiny even threatened Kelly. Talk about you don't want none of this. You don't want to. I F you up. I F you up. I kick your ass. I kick your ass. <laughs> and then here's Sean. Sloop footed. Not need Sean chasing after. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And you know what? I'll bail her out. And we all, as a love after lockup family, said, You would. You will have this woman who haven't showed any love to you. You will bail her out for beating up the mother of your six, seven children who was taking care of your children when you didn't. Okay? You wasn't sending no child support, wasn't going to see them, you wasn't taking their phone calls. And we know this to be true because your daughter was crying snot flying 
on national television for you. We all remember it, Sean. But Sean still didn't get it. So Dumpster Fire Destiny said, you know what? I'm tired of you. <laughs> I don't ran through you. Okay? I don't ran through your money. So Destiny gets in that car that wasn't hers, Sean's car, then took some money, took the credit card, and she bounced to her sister's house. Didn't even tell Sean where she was going. She was just saying, you know what? I need time to think. <laughs> this isn't working out. Okay, you chose Kelly over me. You chose your kids over me. Honey, this woman was an old trash bag. And let's not forget one of the most iconic scenes of their storyline. Y'all remember when Dumpster Fire Destiny thought that possibly she could have been pregnant? We all knew that was a lie. Or she had something rupture in her stomach. Mm-hmm. That she had this dramatic scene where she is, oh, 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 my stomach, all cramping up. And then she goes to an emergency room and we all know what it was, honey. The doctor told her to drink her some good old prune juice and get the hell up out that hospital. <laughs> honey, the only thing she had was bubble gum. Honey, she had some gas. But of course, everything was destiny was so dramatic. And so she ends up ghosting, you know, Sean. Sean was chasing her. Sean, you know, was doing all these things to try to find his vehicle, see if the credit card had been used. And then, showdown. Okay. Sean finally caught up with destiny. Sean done got him a tow service. The tow man done went out there and he done got that vehicle. And Destiny said, not today. Destiny was hot, honey. Hot. Hotter than a hooker's cooch. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Hey, Tony. Ah. And so... The tow service is there, Destiny screaming, yelling, cussing, calling Tony all kinds of, I mean, calling Sean all kinds of names. Sean was like, how could you do this to me, Destiny? I love you. Are you going to take my vehicle? Destiny stands on top of that vehicle or the tow truck. Honey, I had never wanted a tow truck lift to drop. That's all I wanted. I wanted that guy to jump in that vehicle and just be like, <laughs> off you go. And Destiny hit the pavement face first, but that didn't happen. But yes, that was Sean and that was Destiny. And we know Sean done moved on with Sarah and we know Destiny. She had her another kid and I don't know what's going on with her. Wish her well. We sure will. But that was Dumpster Fire Destiny and Sean. Next! Now, before I talk about these two, I'm going to say this. All right. I thought about not including them in this. How can I not? They are love after lockup royalty. First, let me just say this. R.I.P. to Tracy. R.I.P. to her. She had a long, hard road. And we all know that she had her um, addiction issues. Her substance abuse played out on the show. And she um, later on um, passed away. She did have a child that I do believe, don't quote me, don't quote me, but I do believe is now with family members. Y'all let me know in the comments if that is um, right. But Tracy passed away, um, you know, uh, years ago. A couple of years ago, three years ago, something like that. But anyway, let's talk about Clint and Tracy. 
Now, when they came on the scene, we were like, here we are. Thank you. Thank you, love, after lock up Jesus. Thank you, hallelujah. Here's another couple that keeps giving us what we need. Clint, all right? Y'all remember his ex-wife? Y'all remember when we seen his ex-wife and we were like, That's your ass what? But see, Clint also was battling his demons. Okay. He was also an addict. Alright. But of course, the same old story. He met an inmate. Fell in love with the inmate. Let me go ahead and dump out my bank account for the inmate. But he had lovely parents. Alright. His mama was just so sweet okay clint looked like he grew up in a very nice affluent neighborhood his parents look like they done very well for themselves and they just can't quite understand how did he go from his ex-wife to tracy okay someone who also was battling her demons how is that even possible but there's clint Wopsided walking Clint. But I love him, Mom. <laughs> and then, you know, Tracy gets out and let the games mother freaking begin. So, one of the most iconic scenes in all of Love After Lockup was Tracy wasn't even out 24 hours. Okay? Tracy. And Clint was up in that motel, hotel, not the Holiday Inn, getting high. Yes, I said both. Because, see, Clint made it seem like it was just Tracy. And he done, you know, they done had a good meal. He done smashed that back and he done went to sleep. While all that was going on, Tracy done got her some um, substances. She done got back to the motel. She done destroyed the motel room by herself. Done got high. Done left with his money. And I think cell phone. Yeah, even took his cell phone and the rental car. But Clint didn't know what, what was going on. He was frazzled. You can see Clint. And tell that he partook in the shenanigans along with Tracy. They both were up in there doing all kinds of things. Child, when I tell you, Clint looked a mess. His eyeballs was as big as beach balls. But he wanted us to think he didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, after all that, the, the cameraman was in there. They were like, what's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Oh, no, I need to talk to my mama. Honey, Clint was, why he was sweating profusely, okay? His mouth was turned to the left when he was trying to talk out the right, okay? He had that crooked mouth going on. Eyes all big. But he wants us to believe that he woke up and, and everything was dismantled. <laughs> Tracy did this on his own and so he called his mama mom Tracy go Tracy go Tracy took the, my phone don't took the call oh no mom she go and then there was some, something he couldn't even finish his sentence and his sweet mom Clint Clint come home Clint Clint And the one thing about it, the vehicle, is it still, we never found out where the, where the, uh, rental vehicle was. Did we ever find out that somebody, you know, did she take it and dump it on the side of the road? Did she wreck it? Where is the vehicle? The rental. That ended up costing him thousands of dollars. So, of course, Tracy ended up back in, um, jail. She had went to rehab. She had gotten out. She said that she feeling fresh. 
you know, fancy free, healthy. She's good. And her and Clint are going to get married. And guess what, y'all? They went down there to Vegas. And they got married. They sure did. Well, didn't they go to some western saloon restaurant or something and got married, y'all? It didn't last, y'all. Okay. Both of them done fell off of the wagon. And I cannot remember which episode it was, but which episode was it when Clint said that he flushed that stash of substance down the toilet? <laughs> Y'all remember that? Mm hmm When all of us collectively as a Love After Lockup family was like, boy, stop it. We didn't buy that, okay? So... Anyway, that marriage didn't last, and then eventually Tracy, um, you know, her addiction um, took over, okay? The love for her addiction was, you know, more love than she had for, um, for Clint, so. And then they did their separate, they went their separate ways, you know, Tracy found her a new boo, she eventually ended up having a child, and... I told you already what happened um, with Tracy, but we will never forget Clint and Tracy story. We will never forget those two. So anyway, thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Clint, for giving us some of the best reality TV out there. Let's move on. The mental health worker. She has a master's degree in counseling. See, that's what she said. Angela. Now, we met Angela and her heavy throat, her smoker's throat. She, she's smoking, you know, four packs of cigarettes a day. Hard face. Okay, we, we met Angela. 47-year-old Angela. Angela, I want to need you to put them cigarettes down. If that's 47, put them down. <laughs> that's enough. So, Angela was all into an inmate named Tony. I mean, it was nothing like Tony. Again, dead, 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 dead. I done spent this on Tony. I done spent that on Tony. But it was nothing like Tony. And only thing Angela could talk about was when Tony gets out and Tony can blow out that back. Okay? Angela said that she wanted to put her mouth in the ash. And Tony was all for it. Oh, he can't wait to see Angela. He can't wait to spend his life with Angela. He can't wait to, you know, get his life, you know, together so they can have this happy wife, happy life, bull crap. And honey, the minute Tony got in that vehicle and he started talking to Angela and he seen Angela, that was it. He was like, oh, wait a minute. This is... And then here's Angela. What do you want to do, Tony? We got a couple of hours before I take you to the halfway house. <laughs> and so Tony was like, honey, I got to go now. <laughs> now, out of all the participants we have seen throughout the years, most of the participants are like, child, I don't want to go to that halfway house. I don't want to go to a sober living facility. I don't want to go. Honey, it wasn't Tony. Tony said, child, we need to go now. Mm-hmm. See, they told me, what time is it? Okay, it's 5 o'clock. They told me I need to be there at 515. That's what they said. Mm-hmm. Take me there now. But, Tony, what about all the promises you said to me? Oh, Tony. Only thing he then he kept talking about food, 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 food. He really wanted a steak. That's what he wanted. He didn't want no back. He didn't want no legs. He didn't want no cooch. He wanted a steak. 
And so Angela done got in her feelings and she realized that she ain't gonna get her back cracked. And so Angela said, So you mean to tell me, Tony, that you would rather have a steak instead of a blowjob? So embarrassing. <laughs> he hadn't even been down five minutes and he knew he would rather have a steak than get up in Angela's steak. Then get up in Angela's pastries. So Angela, if that wasn't a clear sign right there, huge red flag. He would rather eat something else than eat me. <laughs> so time went on, okay? And there was all kinds of shenanigans with these two, all right? Cheating rumors. Breaking up, making up. Angela done burnt his clothes and belongings. Angela done threw him out the house. Get the F out. Time and time again. But she kept taking um, Tony back. Time and time again. And y'all remember her sister, another co-participant that we like. Her sister tried to tell her, girl, you a whole fool out here. You're sounding foolish. You're looking foolish. That man didn't care nothing about you. He cheating. And then one of the most iconic scenes, there were several with Angela and Tony, but this one was fantastic. Y'all remember when Angela accused um, Tony's co-worker of them cheating? And Angela goes to this man's job. Because, see, Tony was working at a motel. She done went to this man's job and confronted his co-worker. She was in there folding laundry. And, honey, Angela was like, I know you've been sleeping with Tony. And I'm here to tell you he my man. Stay away from him. Honey, that woman said if you don't get out my face, teeth, or lack thereof, See, I work. I don't want nothing to do with Tony. He's a hot mess. I don't know who you think you are, honey. At that point, I was like, Angela, you about to get wop wop right there in the motel laundry room. <laughs> honey, that woman was not here to play. So Angela left. Tail tucked between her legs, got embarrassed, come to find out that, you know, Tony was out there sleeping with the ladies of the night. Just a mess. But again, Angela kept taking him back. But I love Tony. I love him, and how can I deny him? I'm trying to help him, and he says that he loves me. Oh, Angela. So then she made a list. She gave him rules. And how can we forget the rules that Angela gave Tony? And Tony laughed at y'all. She done made these rules. This is a woman who has a master's degree in counseling. Made these elementary school rules that look like an elementary school student wrote. Tony just scuffed at that because Tony knew what he was doing. And then there was proof. Angela done found out of all these text messages. She done called the girl. It was just a mess. And so then she finally told Tony, get out. Don't let the door hit you with a good boy split And it was over. I believe this was after Tony, um, her and Tony was married. I think that was it, right? Or maybe not. Child, they done broke up so many times, child. 
And then eventually, Tony and Angela finally broke up, finally got a divorce. He done took her money and her vehicle, done went to another state to see some other woman. Okay? And then Angela got involved with another inmate. It was just one thing after another with these two, but oh boy. Oh boy. Did they keep us entertained? Congratulations to Tony and Angela for giving us iconic scenes from Love After Lockup. Let's move on. How can we have the most toxic couples, or I should say trio of fools? The original trio of fools, child. Okay. How can we not have a list of the most toxic couples without these three? Oh, yes. Sarah, Michael, and Megan. They are love after lockup. They are the three that had us talking, scratching our head, laughing. We just could not believe that these three, these two women, was doing all these shenanigans and fussing and arguing over Michael. Michael got out of prison looking dusty, musty, and crusty. See, that's why I named him Musty Michael. Michael was ashy, his brains was busted. Everything that came out his mouth was garbage. When Michael got out of prison, he was lying. He lied to Sarah, his wife, okay? He had already had a child with Sarah, okay? All right? And so here is, you know, Michael and Sarah and, you know, husband and wife. And Sarah was like, he's going to do well. He's going to do well. He's going to make his life better with me. With me, his wife. Honey. That didn't last five minutes. See, Michael had a secret. He was plotting. He was carrying on, child. But see, Sarah didn't see all that. Michael was just out here telling lies. On top of lies. And then we find out that not only was Michael a no good husband, he was also a no good shit ass father. Michael didn't care nothing about them kids. Didn't care nothing about those children. Okay? Every time when Michael visited his children, he, he always was empty-handed. He didn't have no Cheez-Its. He didn't have no goldfish. He didn't have no juice. He didn't have no water. He didn't have no gifts. He didn't have no toys. The only thing Michael showed up with was a wet penis and lies. That's all he showed up with. And Sarah always had the door open for him. Come on in. Come on in and lie to me some more. Come on. Michael kept, kept, kept Sarah on a string. Always. But see, Michael has something in his back of his mind. Yeah, Sarah was his wife. Yeah, Sarah was the mother of his children. But he had a queen. Oh, we were introduced to Megan. Megan seemed like a sweet girl. Sweet girl. Come from a, 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 appears to be a very nice, nice family. Nice neighborhood. Her dad seemed like a sweet man. And then she done got herself tangled up with Musty Michael. Now she said she was a virgin. She was a virgin, and that she was saving herself for Musty. Mm-hmm. She wanted Musty down there to take her virginity. Y'all remember all this? But see, Megan was also known for that wig, child. Y'all remember that wig was sitting on top of... <laughs> we was like, Megan, if you don't take that thing off your head. But see, in the um, next season, she got braids, okay? 
She got, she took care of that weed. But then there was Megan. Okay? Megan looked like she was settled. Megan was sweet. I think Megan was a nurse. Wasn't she a nurse or something like that? She had her job. She was taking care of herself. But then she got involved with Musty Michael. Two years. Two years she was carrying on with Michael. Okay? Two years. And she was, unbeknownst to her, Michael was carrying on with Sarah. Married to Sarah. Michael was living these two lives. All lives. And he's carrying on with Megan. And, you know, they're going off to Niagara Falls. And he ends up, you know, taking her virginity. Oh, yes, he did. And then, really, that's all Michael wanted. Even though he said Megan was his queen. Michael had other intentions. And we all know what they were. Michael can't be faithful. Can't be faithful. And so, Megan was all in it. Michael loves me. He wants to marry me. We're engaged, even though he's still married to Sarah. And Sarah was pregnant, that already had a child. This is her second child. Child, it was a hot mess. And some of my timeline may be off, but y'all understand. Y'all remember. And now, one time did we ever see water hit Michael's body, child. <laughs> Michael really thought he was that dude. And so, Megan and Sarah finally knew of each other. And it was time for the set down of all set downs, child. Sarah was all pregnant. She had the two braids. Megan said that child. And so Sarah turned on her black scent. Who are you? Who are you? I'm his wife. Don't you see I'm pregnant? He using you. He using you. And see, Sarah was having her displaced anger towards Megan instead of drop kicking Michael in his throat. She's cussing and fussing at Megan. Megan was shocked. Megan didn't, didn't realize. Megan didn't know that Michael. So you're upset with me because I'm carrying on a relationship with Michael. Eh, eh. Pump your brakes, helper. You still with him. <laughs> you still with him. And not only that, see, you had this little thought in your head that he may have been cheating and you got pregnant. You talk about me. And so when Megan cracked her face, this was Sarah. I don't want to talk no more. Get her out my face. Get her out my face. I was like, oh, Sarah, pick up your nose and your lips and your eyes. <laughs> so then Michael gets out of jail. It was the next season. Sarah got two beautiful girls and Michael's nowhere to be found. Megan finally came to her senses finally came to her senses and she booted michael but see michael wasn't finished was he mm -mm. he ran tucked his tail in to sarah and sarah took him back over and over and over again even though sarah was in relationships herself but it was always michael made his way back in and sarah actually thought that her and michael was finally going to be that picture perfect family and then michael had another secret there was maria sarah done moved on mega done moved on and i think musty michael and maria are together and i think they have a child together That's it. This was fun doing this, going down memory lane with you all. Okay? If y'all want more, y'all know I can give you more. Y'all let me know down below. Hit the like button. Okay? Hit the like button if you want more.
toxic couples because you know I can give it to you. So it's up to you. To my new subscribers, welcome to the family. And y'all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends.